been pr passing on a, for a daily figure around 200 deaths uh, per day. That was not the case before. We had it in, in single di digits. Uh, even, even I think about four or five months back, we had it in double digits. But now, uh, you know, it's increasing. Now, this is where the fear comes back into play. So people are afraid, Professor. They, they're afraid. They, nobody wants to die. So when you come up and say, you know, uh, this is not the way to go, what is the way to go? By making sure that we address the fact that we're keeping people safe and, and, and not, yep. you know, people dying. Yeah, so, so the first thing that I'll say is interesting how you pose the question, and this is how the question is being posed uh, around the world by governments that have locked down, is they say, well, prove to us that lockdowns don't work right rather than the burden of proof being on those who have suggested these extremely draconian restrictions uh as actually being effective right so the the switch of the burden of proof should already show you that there is a a, a change in the narrative mm -hmm. compared to what we would normally have in normal times uh that is basically not reasonable it, it should be the province of the person suggesting a radical policy to defend that policy in terms of its actual effects on the things we care about in this case as you say saving as many lives as possible right Yes, And I completely concur with that objective. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to save as high as we can number of quality adjusted life years, life of human beings, right? That's what we're going for. Now, I, what we are very fortunate in uh, on planet Earth to have witnessed over the last 18 months is that not every single region and country uh, took part in the madness. So Sweden, you may recall, was a country that everybody loved to hate last year, uh, and they were pilloried for their non-lockdown approach. Now they did but have they some had a very high death rate. They had a very high. They death rate. did have a high death rate initially, initially, and they had they messed up with their old old age homes. They were the first country in the world, really, to experiment with trying no lockdowns, and so they did learn something about what to do in old age care homes. But with their approach, what happened is they developed a very high level of natural immunity. And if you look at their situation today, they've lost somewhere around 0.16% or so of their population with COVID, which is, you know, it's, it's not great. It's not a great result, but it's not as bad as the UK. It's not as though Sweden had the worst result by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, they were somewhere in the middle of Europe in, in terms so, of their so, results. So what you're saying is... On the other hand, their economy is doing pretty well. So, you know, that approach was not a mandated approach. It wasn't a lockdown, but they did have certain kinds of uh, guidelines for people to follow. And, and they had targeted protection eventually when they figured out what they were doing with the old age care homes. And that's what we should be going towards, is a model of targeted protection for people who are seriously vulnerable from getting really bad effects of this virus where there is a, a, a prophylactic protocol that one can be applied to people who are particularly at risk. And that, of course, does not exclude the possibility of, of offering vaccines to any of the vulnerable who want them. I think that's a, a good idea. Uh, we have this new technology, let's use it. Um, but it also involves the, the calming of the people by providing really valuable and, and reliable information about the actual likelihood that anybody who is healthy and young is going to suffer serious consequences of this virus. Of course, it's possible, but it's very, very unlikely relative to many other things that can go wrong in your life, right? And that includes losing your business and not being able to have money to feed your family, having crowded out health care for other things, and then eventually having a higher death rate because of all of those things. And that's not to mention the loneliness and the social isolation that we inflict yeah. upon people, which weakens them, uh, weakens them and their ability to fight back against any bug, including dengue or COVID.